Hi, it's Last Week from the Table for Tuesday, May 26th, 2020. I'm your host, DM Galavant. Hello, everybody. This is Last Week from the Table for Tuesday, the 26th of May. In this show, we talk about the latest sessions from the actual play games that I run on my Twitch channel over at twitch.tv slash Galabond. This past week marked the 20th and the final planned session for the Dragon of Ice Spire Peak. The party had capped out at 6th level, which is what the uh, adventure goes to, and they had their showdown with the young white dragon and the white dragon's cronies. Now, I had noticed in the two or three times that the party had faced the dragon before that they were more than a match for the dragon by itself. So I decided that at the lair, they needed to have um, some allies of the dragon that were going to um, also be fighting against the party. Now there's, it lists in the adventure, it lists that there's some mercenaries there. They're kind of hiding out and trying to wait until the dragon leaves. But I thought it would be more interesting to have those mercenaries actually be allies of the dragon and be prototypical or be uh, cultists, uh, members of the cult of the dragon. Uh, which, of course, will play a greater role later on in the history of the Sword Coast, um, you know, through the other published adventures of the uh, of fifth edition. So uh, I put them in there along with a shaman leader, and the party uh, had their hands full. Um, there was one player, the cleric, that went down from an attack, um, a withering attack by the shaman uh, that basically just sapped all the moisture out of her body and um, dropped her to zero hit points. And then another character, the bard, got blasted by the ice breath of the white dragon later on and got taken down by that. Um, and actually, the bard got taken down so far that he was dead dead, uh, if not for the fact that the cleric had the revive spell available and so was able to bring him back uh, with one hit point, and then he was able to use some potions to uh, get himself back into the fight. Um, but it was it was a very harrowing fight, and uh, the party did come out victorious in the end, and their story ended. Uh, I gave a chance for each of the players to sort of say what their characters did as they went off. Uh, now... Just because this story is ending doesn't mean that we're going to stop playing on Thursday nights. In fact, this Thursday, you can join us for Session Zero for what I'm calling uh, the Sword Coast Chronicles, which is a survey, if you will, of the published adventures uh, from across the Sword Coast. And... It tries to answer the question, why are all these chaotic events happening almost on top of each other and very close together and very nearly at the same moment in time in the Sword Coast? Uh, you know, as I started looking at the chronology that Wizards of the Coast had published or had suggested for when these take place, I said, man, a lot of this stuff keeps happening all at the same time, all in relatively the same area. There's got to be a reason behind it. And so I made up a story for what's behind it. And then as the players dip in and out of the storylines of these uh, published adventures, they will come to discover what, uh, you know, what's going on in the uh, 
in each of these uh, you know, places. So join us for uh, Sword Coast Chronicles starting this Thursday, and that should be a pretty fun uh, adventure. We're picking up another player in that adventure, so we're going to have a full party, uh, a full party of seven players, uh, which should be interesting uh and you know we'll like i said we'll have our session zero recorded uh this week as part of the uh you know the character creation session and it may take us two sessions to do character creation and introduction uh, we'll just have to see how that goes uh, i'm not going to rush it i'm just going to let it go at its own pace because uh, i got a lot of players that enjoy um role play all right, now, this brings me to the Walker of Waterdeep. Sundays at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. And Sunday we had session 51. And I'm not sure if there's going to be a session 52 at this point of this game. And that's a shame because it's a, to me, it's an enjoyable game. Um... It's kind of a hectic and stressful game for me, but it's it's enjoyable. Um, the players have made it very enjoyable. But something happened yesterday that just takes a lot of the joy of this game away for me. And, you know, to be quite honest, we're probably not going to play this coming Sunday. And it's probably going to be my decision not to play this Sunday. Um, just to give myself time to think about what happened and um, see if there's a way of moving forward from it. And uh, I know that we have one player that's, well, said as of yesterday, they're not going to be back because of some intra-party stuff that happened in the session yesterday. And, you know, I've said it before uh, when we were talking about the end of the uh, history of D&D &D campaign. As a DM, I think you always have to take responsibility for what happens in your game. The successes, um, the successes are largely due to the players interacting with what you've set before them. The failures are due to the DM not putting what's needed in front of the players. Um, basically, I had put the players in a situation where there was a choice. Um, there was, you know, it's kind of like in the Elder Scrolls games. You always have the main quest. Whatever quest it is that you're character is on that is supposed to lead to your character's ultimate destiny within the you know within that episode of the elder scrolls um in this case i had given them you know they've been on their main quest for quite a while and now they've gotten to innistrad and you know i presented uh toral water deep the sword coast as a really screwed up place while they were there then they got to ravnica and they realized that all the political machinations they thought they knew about in the sword coast and the reason you know all the petty squabbles and the stuff that they didn't like about that well that was all magnified tenfold in ravnica and so they really didn't like it there and now they've gotten to Innistrad. And Innistrad is a place where, just pulling from the lore out of Magic the Gathering, where they had an archangel who was their savior in Avacyn. Then at some point, Avacyn had been trapped in the Hellgate. Then she was released from the Hellgate, but she came out corrupted. And then according to the lore, she was banished, destroyed. It's kind of nebulous what happened to uh, Avison by her own creator, uh, the vampire lord Edwin Markov. 
Okay. Vampires creating archangels. Hey, I don't make this stuff up. It's just what's in the lore of the of the plane. Um, you know, blame the people at Wizards of the Coast for that. But I had said, okay, this, these people are really, really desperate for someone to help them try to find out what happened to Avison and see if maybe they can restore her. And so I have a paladin and a cleric in the party, and I thought, okay, they're probably going to be motivated to help the people. The others may go along with that, or they may feel the pull of the main, of uh, you know, the main timeline. Because I've also set up in the back of their minds, there's this countdown clock, like a doomsday clock. If they don't get stuff done in a certain amount of time, oh boy, everybody's going to be in real trouble. So there's a little bit of pressure to hurry up and get the main quest done but there's also this you know humanity of the people of Innistrad that desperately need help and indeed that pulled the party in two different directions and it actually came to an impasse and it came to an impasse where there was an argument now not not yelling and shouting at each other but an impassioned argument that this character was absolutely certain that what they needed to do is go help these people. And, you know, this other character was absolutely certain that what they needed to do is get on with the main quest. And it stalled the whole party out, and they couldn't get anywhere because these guys couldn't agree on what was going on. And... You know, even when a couple of other people said, well, let's just figure out what the majority wants to do. They were just so tightly sticking to their guns. Neither one of them wanted to budge. And one of the players thought, you know, that I'm I'm doing this because I really think this is what my character would do. And if I want to be true to the character, maybe the best thing for me to do is to set this character aside and create a new one and move forward with the rest of the group. And then the other players were like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. No, 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 no. You can't do that because that character that you want to set aside is very central to the core of what this group is all about. And if that character leaves, there may be one or two other characters that also leave the party. So that character going off could really cause not only that player to have to re-roll a character, but several other players just sort of in a cascade uh, effect because of the relationships built up between the party members over time. And so, you know, during this time, I was trying to offer additional suggestions and trying to offer different options but and every time i felt like we were about to come to a consensus this whole you know philosophical well i don't understand why you want to do this and i don't understand why it's a problem with you if we do this and that all just boiled back up again so ultimately one of the players just got tired of discussing left the voice channel in Discord, and very shortly thereafter, um, uh, disconnected from the Discord server, so no longer appears on the Discord server, and resigned from the game. So, then that left everybody else feeling like, well, that's... That's absolutely not what we wanted to happen. And, of course, there were some hard feelings around that. So, I mean, on the one hand, as a DM, I'm really glad that I have created a game that is so compelling that it really has people passionate about wanting 
to explore these stories. But on the other hand, I feel kind of guilty for creating a situation that is trying to tear these characters apart. That's not at all what I want to do. I want the characters to be a party as a unit and go forward. And so I feel like I need to step back, figure out what I've done wrong, figure out what I can learn from it and how I can better move forward. And I don't know that I'm going to be ready to move forward with this next Sunday. So this game may take a break, at least for a week. And the game may not ever come back. I don't know. It's at least not with this specific storyline, with these players, with this party. I've always, and I say always, um, ever since Magic the Gathering came out in 93, and my friends and I first started playing in the earliest, earliest sets of cards. Uh, I mean, I remember cards that we had bought before Antiquities was published. So, I don't know whether we had... I'm not going to claim that we had any alphas or betas, but, you know, there were several publications, you know, several editions published in 1993, and we were buying cards and playing the game at that time. So, it's just very... Uh, you know, I've been wanting to figure out how to put a D and D game together using creatures out of that game, and I finally have gotten to the point where I've done that, and I've finally gotten to the point where it's where it's been fun for the players to do this. But uh, yeah. Fun for the players is not, I mean, there's something that I've failed to do. So, I would have to have a good think about this and figure out what to do going forward. So, I haven't told my players yet, and by the time I publish this, I'll let them know. Um, but yeah, eh, probably not going to play this Sunday. May not play this game again. Maybe a new game that pops up on Sunday afternoons. Um, or maybe time to go back and do something. I don't know. I don't know. 51 Sessions. Deep into the story. A lot of good memories out of this game. A lot of fun episodes that came from this game. But, you know, none of us are perfect. So anyway, kind of a bummer about this week's episode. In any case everyone. That's going to do it for this week's Tales from the Table. As I always say, you know, you want to uh, make your games memorable so that you can have tales that you can share from your table. Maybe I also need to say, just be careful you don't make things too memorable. So that the tales you have to share might be the last ones from that table. All right. Peace out, everybody. <laughs>